In the last video, I showed you my digital desk companion. A small creature that reacts to you, gets bored, needs attention and slowly develops its own behavior over time. You also voted on the name and most of you agreed on one. So from now on, this little guy is called Morty. Many of you asked when the project would be available on Kofi. So with this video, all the files for Morty are now online on my Kofi if you want to build your own version. In this video, I want to focus on how I build Morty. From the electronics, to the enclosure, to the moment he wakes up on your desk for the first time. The path to a finished Morty wasn't exactly a smooth one. There were quite a few problems along the way and some of the most important design decisions only happened after things went wrong. Before starting the physical build, there is one important step that needs to be done. And that is flashing the microcontroller. I already showed what the code does and how Morty behaves in the last video. So I will not go into the individual features again here. The PyPico can be flashed directly using the Arduino IDE, which makes the process fairly straightforward. I put together a detailed step-by-step -step guide in the build instructions on my Kofi. That includes the correct board settings, libraries and everything you need to get the code running. I recommend flashing the microcontroller before assembling anything. Let's start with the electronics. At the heart of Morty is a Raspberry Pi Pico 2. I usually work with ESP32 boards, but for this project I wanted to try something new and step outside my usual setup. For the display I'm using around 1.28 inch TFT. These displays are surprisingly affordable, but they still offer a really nice resolution which makes a big difference for facial expressions and small animations. For interaction I decided to use three capacitive touch sensors. They keep the interface very minimal and direct, but they also turned out to be one of the most challenging parts of the entire project. Power comes from a 1000 mAh battery combined with a small USB-C charging breakout board. To give Morty a voice, I added a simple passive buzzer. And finally, so Morty can actually sleep at night, I added a brightness sensor, allowing him to react to ambient light instead of running constantly. The build itself starts with the enclosure. All parts are fully 3D printed. Once the prints are finished, the first step is preparing the display. Most of these round TFT displays already come with their pins pre-soldered. Unfortunately, that does not really help in this case, because we still need to solder wires directly to the display. This is not a problem though, the pre-soldered pins can be removed easily and cleanly. I recommend using a solder pump for this, because it makes the process quick and controlled. I linked the one I use in the video description. Once the pins are removed, all required wires can be soldered directly to the display. Take your time here and make sure every connection is solid. A small but very important tip at this stage is to take a photo once all cables are soldered. That way, you always know which wire color belongs to which label on the display later on. After that, the display is placed into the front of the enclosure and fixed in place with the mounting plate behind it. This plate holds the display securely and also acts as a holder for the battery. Next comes the charging breakout board. The necessary cables are soldered and the board is placed into its dedicated slot inside the case. I usually secure it with a small amount of hot glue, just to make sure it does not move over time. Once everything is closed, this part is very hard to reach again, so it is worth taking a moment to make sure it is properly fixed. After that, the three touch sensors are soldered and inserted into the enclosure. Each sensor sits in its own cutout and needs to be pushed all the way to the back of the recess to work reliably. And this is where things started to get complicated. The touch sensors caused a lot more problems than I originally expected. They were constantly triggered by other components inside the case, especially the battery. I tried many different solutions. I added aluminum foil as shielding. I connected that shielding to ground. I even tried printed barriers between the sensors and the rest of the electronics. None of it worked reliably. In the end, the only solution that actually fixed the problem was increasing the distance between the touch sensors and the other components, which unfortunately means that Morty ended up with a fairly thick head. Not the most elegant solution, but a reliable one. Once the touch sensors are in place, the battery goes in. It sits directly behind the display and is fixed in place with another mounting plate. This keeps everything compact and prevents the battery from moving around inside the case. 
Instead of fixing the Raspberry Pi Pico in place right away, I first place it loosely inside the enclosure with something underneath it for support. This is important because it keeps the cables long enough so the microcontroller can be taken out later without having to desolder everything. This is unfortunately necessary if you ever want to reflash the Pico or install updates, since this only works through the micro USB port on the Pico itself and not through the USB C charging port on the front. After that I add the brightness sensor and the passive buzzer. I place these components last to have a bit more space while soldering the other cables. The brightness sensor is fixed in place using a small amount of hot glue to keep it stable. As the very final step I solder the power cable from the charging board to the Pico. At this point Morty should give his first sign of life. Once everything is working, the support underneath the Pico can be removed, the Pico can be fixed in place and the backplate of the enclosure can be mounted. Before I wrap this up, I want to be honest about the current state of the project and what I would change in the next version. Morty was built in roughly two weeks and in that amount of time it is simply not realistic to fully optimize balance behavior and power consumption all at once. Some parts work very well already and others clearly still need refinement. One of the biggest points is battery life. With the current setup it lasts around 10 to 12 hours, which is less than I would like for something that is meant to live on your desk. The main limitation here is the display, which cannot really be put into a proper low power sleep mode. Going forward there are a few realistic ways to improve this. Using a MOSFET to completely cut power to the display when it is not needed, switching to a more efficient or dimmable screen or simply using a larger battery are all options I am actively considering. Another area I want to improve are the thought bubbles. They already react to different needs but with more work they could show a lot more personality and nuance. So if you decide to support this project, it is important to understand that Morty is not a finished product in the traditional sense. It is a living project that will continue to evolve over time. The good part is that if you get the project on Kofi, you will receive all future updates, improvements and refinements for free. I will keep working on this and pushing updates as the project grows. The code is something I kept refining throughout the entire project. Behavior, timing and reactions evolved step by step while building and testing Morty. If you decide to build your own version and come up with improvements or new ideas, I would genuinely love to hear about them. That is one of the best parts about sharing a project like this. With that, Morty is finished. What started as a simple idea slowly turned into a small character living on my desk. If you want to build your own Morty, all the files are now available on my Kofi. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching and for all the feedback along the way.